Hey everyone, um, I realize this is a bit of a different video from the ones I've been making recently. I've mostly been focusing on Minecraft and other Let's Plays, and I was actually about to upload a Minecraft video, but then I thought maybe I should hold off on that because I have some important stuff to say and to talk about. It's not happy stuff, um, so if you guys are only sub to me, for the fun Minecraft stuff and the fun Let's Plays, I understand that. You can click off this video. There's plenty of other videos for you to watch, including some of my own. Um, but I feel like this is important to talk about. So for those who haven't heard, this past week there were multiple shootings in Orlando, Florida, which is about four hours from where I live. Um, and none of them really make any sense. And by that I mean I understand why at least one of them happened, but it doesn't sort of register in my mind why anyone would take someone else's life over a disagreement or something else. So... For those who haven't heard, um, a few days ago, um, a popular singer, Christina Grimmie, was signing autographs after one of her concerts, and someone came up to her and shot her, and then shot himself. She was rushed to the hospital, and she didn't make it. Um, yeah, so she was 22, and... She was, well, let me start by saying she was popular on YouTube before she ever got famous in mainstream media. Uh, and then she went on The Voice and did well there. And from there, she kind of built her career. Um, but I just want to say it again to make sure this really sinks in. She was 22. And... You know, I didn't know her personally, and you know, I only knew her from her YouTube videos and interviews and her Facebook page and things like that. So I knew her public persona, but from that, it seemed like she was one of the nicest people. And from what I've been hearing from other YouTubers and other artists who did know her personally, she was. Now, there were things that she uh, had said or things that she believed in that I don't necessarily agree with, but nothing that would so much as offend most people, let alone drive someone to do something like this man did. Um, and from the actions that he took prior to actually meeting Christina and, and shooting her, it's clear that he targeted her, that he planned this out and for whatever reason was desperate enough to end his own life. So in some way, he must have believed that he had to do this, but we'll never know because we can't ask him. So... I, I want to say, you know, I want to say that my thoughts are with Christina's family and her friends, but that's so cliche that at this point I'm not sure if it has any meaning or if it holds any comfort for them. And all I can do is hope that. I don't know. I. See, that's the thing. When there is a tragedy like this, everyone tries to find hope, they try to find comfort in whatever ways they can. And that's a very human thing to do, but in some cases, especially most cases where someone's life is taken from them, I feel like there is no hope to be found, at least not for that particular case. Maybe there's hope for the future, but not for the past. And I feel like maybe there shouldn't be hope. Because to me, the more an event haunts people, the more 
they really feel how tragic and terrible and horrific the event was, the more they'll be moved to try and prevent stuff like this from happening in the future. Um, so in other words, when people start going around saying, well, at least this is okay because that, or, you know, it could have been worse, or maybe someone deserved it, or at least there's justice, no matter what, if you start a sentence with at least when talking about someone who's lost their life, I feel like all you're doing is minimizing the pain and you're making it less likely to motivate people to not let it happen in the future. So for me, all I can say is I hope for a hopeful future. Um, but yeah, I... I, I do feel a lot of pain from it. But of course, in the beginning of this video, I did mention that there were two shootings. So that was the first one. And then this morning, or I mean, technically yesterday morning, um, there was a club called Pulse, um, also in Orlando, Florida. And a gunman came in with an automatic rifle, which is a machine gun which somehow is legal. He had a license for it and everything. And he came in and shot everyone. Killed 50 people, injured many more. Um, and Pulse is a... It's a gay club. It's a gay bar. And... You know, maybe this guy didn't agree with homosexuality. Maybe... His religion told him it was wrong. Maybe he just personally didn't like it. I don't know. But it doesn't really matter because no matter what his beliefs are, nothing would justify killing one person, let alone 50 innocent people who were all just trying to go out and have a relaxing night and enjoy themselves. <laughs> Nobody could have ever thought that the day they decided to go out to a club, they were going to get shot to death in a massacre. So, just like with Christina Grimmie, there's... I feel like there's no comfort to be found from this, and there shouldn't be. But I do hope that the friends and family of the people who were lost will heal over time. Um, there's a saying that my therapist once told me, which is that um, wounds, emotional wounds don't ever heal. They just get covered up with scar tissue and dulled. And I hope that the pain of this will get its scar tissue and, and not hurt as much in the future, but... I do hope it still hurts a little bit so that nobody ever forgets what kind of horrible things can happen if measures aren't taken. Now, I don't want to get political, um, and I, you know, especially in America, uh, gun laws and gun rights are a big issue and, and sort of you can't talk about them without someone screaming at you. So I don't want to make this political, um, but when a man is able to take gun safety training, pass it, and then pass three different criteria to let him own an automatic rifle, and then take that into a club and kill 50 people, something is not right and something is broken um and it's not something broken like oh these people don't have enough money we need to give them more money it's something's broken as in these people are now dead they're not coming back and they never will <laughs> You know, the way I had said it before when I was talking to someone about it is nobody lost their life here. Everyone's life was stolen from them. 
and that is just never okay. So, yeah. So again, sorry for such a somber video. Minecraft videos will resume in the future. Like I said, I have one already that I was planning on uploading. I'll probably upload that tomorrow. Um, and for those of you who who did watch this, um, you know, feel free. Excuse me. Feel free to discuss in the comments if you want, or or not. Um, but try to be civil to each other if you can. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I, I don't I don't really know what I hope to accomplish with this video except to let my feelings be known and to I guess to spread the news of what's happened in Orlando this week to maybe people in other countries or other areas of the world that don't you know that don't have access to that information or haven't heard yet um, but yeah so all I can say is that I hope the scar tissue comes for the friends and family of everyone who was killed at Pulse and for friends and family of Christina. Um, earlier, I watched a video from Sam Swee, who um, some of you may know. He's big on YouTube. Some of you may not. But he does YouTube songs and covers. And I've been subscribed to him for a while, and... Um, a while back, he actually did a collaboration with Christina, so they became good friends, and when this happened, he put up a video, um, if I remember, I'll link to it below, but I, I might forget, but um, just kind of a tribute to her, and very emotional, and you can tell that, you know, the pain is real. It's not... It's not one of those cases where you just say, oh, well, I'm so sorry for your loss, and then move on with your day. It's it's, it's painful. Um, and for me, it's confusing in addition to painful, because like I can understand why the stuff happened at Pulse. It's not right, but I understand that maybe this guy was against homosexuality, and that was his motivation. I can't understand the motivation for Christina's death. Um, you know, like I said, if he's you know he killed himself after, and anyone who's willing to kill themselves for something is desperate. So, in his mind, he must have thought he needed to do it, and I can't figure out why. Um, and you know, not knowing just kind of makes it worse, at least for me. That's just the kind of person I am, I guess, but, um, yeah, you know, we have all this stuff happening in the world, and a lot of it is not good, um, I, but I did recently, somewhat recently, watch a video on the Vlogbrothers channel with Hank Green, where he talked about how, even though all of this horrible stuff is happening in the world, there's also a lot of great stuff happening. And a lot of stuff now is better than it ever was. So if we can just try and focus on the good stuff through the pain, um, maybe it'll help the scarring process a little bit. Um, I guess one last thing that I should mention, since I already got into this discussion, is the... The gunman at Pulse uh, happened to be a Muslim. And here in America, at least, if not abroad, there's been a lot of Islamophobia since 9-11, pretty much. Like, before 9-11, you know, people didn't really care if you were Muslim or not, for the most part, any more than the usual amount of racism that unfortunately exists in the world. But after 9-11, um, you know, there's a huge major terrorist attack committed by some Muslims. People started to generalize and racial profiling, or in this case, religious profiling, became a thing. And it's actually kind of both 
because a lot of people sort of conflate the ideas, which means they sort of mix the ideas up of being Middle Eastern, being Muslim, and being a terrorist. And those are three completely different things. Um, but a lot of people in their minds, it's all the same. And the fact that this gunman was a Muslim means that it fueled the fire for the Islamophobia that already existed to grow even stronger. So now we have people who we have people who are blaming all Muslims for the act of this one man. And the hatred is spewing forth. And all it's doing is making the situation worse. Um, and meanwhile, like as soon as the as soon as the tragedy happened, um, a Muslim representative group immediately put out a statement um, talking about how much they mourn for the victims and encouraging Muslims to help donate blood or resources or whatever they need to to help the victims that are still alive. Um, and you know, on the one hand, that's great. You know, they're encouraging people to help. But on the other hand, it's kind of sad that they had to do that in the first place. Um, because they realized, you know, they're not, they're not stupid. They realize that they're discriminated against in general. And when they found out that this shooter was Muslim, they knew that their entire religion and everyone who follows it was going to get the backlash. And that's not right, but I guess it's the world we live in now. Um, so I'm going to get a little bit mathy on you. So statistically, only about 5 to 10% of terrorism in the United States is actually caused by Muslims. Um, and that's 5 to 10% depending on whether you look at the past like 10 or 20 years. Um and what that means, if you take that number, 5 to 10%, and you factor in the amount of terrorist attacks per year, and the number of Muslims in the world, and the number of possible actions anyone could take, or at least an estimate of it, then what you find is that there is a less than 2% chance that any given Muslim is actually going to ever commit a terrorist act. So anyone who blames all of Islam on these attacks or on the attacks of any particular Muslims um, is pretty much condemning 98% of all the Muslims in the world to discrimination that they don't deserve. Um, so I just want to put that out there. As much as this situation pains me and everyone... Um, I have friends who actually live in Orlando, and I had to double-check all day to make sure they were safe. Um, as much as it pains everyone, don't let that pain turn into hatred. And if you must, uh, if you must feel hatred, then feel hatred for the one man who committed these acts, and not for everyone who follows his religion, because Islam didn't kill 50 people in the nightclub. One man did. Um, so yeah, I guess that's all my thoughts on this. This was mostly a uh, spur-of-the-moment sort of getting my thoughts out there video. There's no script. There was no planning. Just felt it needed to be said. So um, yeah, this will be probably the only video I post on this topic. Um, if I have anything else to say in response to anything, I'll comment it or something. But, yeah, um, I don't know. So, I guess that's that.